Okay, so we're gonna take this a, a step further um, and we're gonna start looking at like, just kind of flipping some things around and understanding what's happening with the values um, and, and how they're organized. So um, basically I've got a set of numbers that represent you know, where the um, X and the Y values are going um, or where the X values are going, right? But everything else is set to a static zero for Y and Z. Um, but if I start plugging these in, I get that if I plug it into Y, and if I plug it into Z, I get this. So that's an important um, understanding is that like the, the information you're generating, you can just kind of recycle it and reuse it all like a, a bunch of different ways. Um, so if we're creating, say, uh, like a grid though, um, you can use this to create grids, um, but you're going to need like multiple sets and stuff. So what's different is you go to um, vector and go to grid and it'll do a lot of this for you. Um, so if I'm going to go to a square grid, um, let's drop that in down here and start to look at that. Um, so before we start working on something else, right, if we have information in our uh, workspace. Um, I think they call it a sketch is like the technical word for it, is that this is a sketch, this thing right here. Um, that might just be Dynamo. I forget. I call it a workspace. Um, but if we have other um, definitions in our workspace, right? And a definition is like I've started some information and then it generated something and it's done, right? And technically the file itself is called a definition, um, but I don't define it that way. Um, so if we have other stuff and we don't want to see it, you can turn it off. That's really nice because this stuff will get crazy when you turn it all on. Um, so anything, anything you want to turn off individually, just uh, right click it and then there's this little preview button like that. You can turn it off and you won't see it anymore. The information is still there. Um, you haven't deleted anything. You can even still reference it if it's turned off. Um, but yeah, you just won't see it. Um, additionally, if you have um, multiple things that are on, um, if you select multiple items and you want to turn them all off, um, hit your middle mouse wheel, and it doesn't have to be on anything, it can be in the workspace there like that, and then um, disable preview on all of those items, okay? And then um, this one I want on, okay? So this is a square grid, it's under, that one's not a group. Uh, it's under vector and grid. Okay, and we're going to borrow some of this information. Um, the difference here is that with square grid, it's going to have a work plane that it is defined on. That just means like where is this grid and what orientation is it, um, which defaults to the world x y meaning zero zero zero, um, which is where that is. Um, and then it's going to ask us for the size of the cell. And it's going to ask us for how many cells in each direction. That's it. Um, so I'm going to borrow the step size. Actually, I could just use the step size here. So let's uh, make that the size of our cell. And then we're going to say how many in the x direction and how many in the y direction. There we go. So now we've got this big grid that shows up. Um, and uh, what's important to know is that that will be correlated with um, our points uh, to a certain degree. So let me borrow uh, this real quick and I'm going to plug this back into Y and Z and turn this back on. Boom. Now, here is a very important lesson learned. Okay, what you're seeing here is that all of these grid um, points are aligned except the very last one. Can anyone tell me why? Venture to guess. It doesn't have a plane. Uh, decent guess, but no. What's that? Kind, kind of, yeah, kind of. Um, so basically, uh, the reason is we have um, the number twenty-three here. Okay, and one definition, we've created 23 numbers to create 23 points. Now, what we've done with a cell 
is we've created 23 cells in the x direction. That means um, the, the last point is actually kind of uh, not really at the base, the base point of that cell. Does that make sense? So we're looking at the bottom left corner of the first cell is that value. And then the bottom left corner of the last cell is that value. So the both of you are kind of right in a way. Um, so if we want to get all of the points, then we have to get it a different way. We extract it from the output of this grid uh, cell node. So um, it has two output values. It has cells and it has points, which is nifty. Um, because when we go to params and we go to um, the point param, um, and remember I told you that these are empty point parameters. They're, they're empty geometry until we fill them with something. Well, that's what I'm doing right here when I take this point value uh, output and I plug it into points. So now um, we're going to look at data in a pretty relentless way in a moment. But now I've got points all over the whole grid and I have them on all of the corners. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm going to let you all get to this point and then we're going to move on to like looking at how that data is structured. Okay, so you can truly understand like, like how these lists are going to work. Okay? No questions? All right. We're getting more complex here. Yeah? Uh, how can you get a point? Uh, this thing? Yeah. It's in params, geometry, point. So, um, oh, just a heads up on that, like any, any time you have like one of these empty params um, or these empty nodes, it's going to show like one of these little ones. Um, so whether it's a line or a mesh or a B-rep, right, they all look like these tiny little ones. So whenever you see these tiny little ones, then you know it came from that menu pretty much. All right, so let's get caught up and then we'll move on.